Hello and thanks for joining me for some more landscape photography. This afternoon I've come up to Cumidwal in the Ogwin Valley and I've got the whole place to myself. Now I've met quite a few people actually heading down off the mountains. We're in mid-September at the moment, so it's that time of year when most of the casual trippers have headed off and the mountains are left to the serious walkers and campers. What I'm intending to do today though is not to spend my time down here at Cumidwal, but I'm actually heading up the shoulder of a garn to a hanging valley about halfway up. And, uh, I'm aiming to spend the night up there and then get some sunrise photography. We're getting on towards the autumn equinox and it's that time of year when the sun rises pretty much due east and sets pretty much due west. Now it's a Friday afternoon, I've knocked off work a couple of hours early to whiz up here at quite short notice because we've got some spectacularly good conditions and I wanted to make the most of them. First off because it's a rare chance to get up without there being any wind at all, currently about zero knots. Um, it's lovely and warm, it's about 17 degrees centigrade. I'm also trying out a new tent. It's a Terra Nova Laser Competition 1. Weighs less than a kilo. I've put it up in the garden and frankly, pretty good. So I'm hopeful I'll have a comfortable night's sleep. Now I'm not really aiming for any sunset photography because I'm going to be right underneath a ridge, the sun's going to go down behind it and in fact it's almost behind it now and it's only half five and still got officially a couple of hours till sunset. So I might get some projected light over on the other side of the valley, remains to be seen. The most important thing is to actually get up to where I'm planning to camp uh, and get myself sorted out. I just wanted to say a big hello to Charles from Cheltenham because I met a few people coming down off the mountain and Charles was one of them and he stopped to say hello and said he watches the channel. So thank you for saying hello, Charles. I appreciate your support. Anyway, I better get cracking because I've got quite a tough climb in front of me. Well, I'm up at Cum Cleed now, and I've got about half an hour to go before sunset. As you can probably see over my shoulder, there's some really quite nice light across the valley on Glidervach and uh, Travan. What I've been doing is taking a few handhelds on the way up though to make the most of it because the time I've got available to me now while it's still light, I need to set up camp, but I also need to scope out my compositions for the morning. Now what I might do in the morning is take a walk up the ridge to the summit of a garn and see if there's some photography to be had over towards Snowdon. Kind of depends on the conditions and what time I get myself finished up here.
Well, it's about quarter past six in the morning with sunrise due in about half an hour. I've already got a couple of images sorted out, which I'll talk you through in a moment or two. What happened in the night was, despite the weather forecast to the contrary, a really savage wind has blown up. And that's a really good lesson about mountain safety. Make sure you go prepared. Luckily, I've always got plenty of layers with me, so I slept perfectly well, very cosy, and now suitably attired for a very cold sunrise shoot. I'm going to have to apologise if I'm a little bit distracted while I talk you through this, but I'm conscious that my tripod could blow over at any moment. Um, because I hadn't expected quite such harsh winds, uh, I've only brought my very lightweight tripod. It's perfectly good for the actual photography, but I do need to keep an eye on it. Anyway, this first composition um, kind of makes itself, and it's a bit of a standard from this particular hanging valley of Cum Cleed. Um, I've seen one or two versions of this image. Now, what I've done with this is there's this really nice rocky outcrop which I'm using for foreground and these jagged rocks that point off to the right. So by using that nice big lump of rock there, it kind of balances the weight of Truvan uh, in the composition. And those little jagged rocks then form a barrier at the bottom in which Clinogwin sort of nestles. The sun is due to come up along the flank of Travan, and according to photo pills, it's going to kind of skirt along the, uh, the north ridge. So that could be interesting. On the other hand, it could be really difficult. Uh, what I'd been hoping for was that the sun would actually be masked by Trivan until it gets up pretty high. Oh, here comes that wind again. Yeah, so this is proving relatively challenging for a number of reasons, but I must say, what a brilliant way to wake up. You just can't beat this. Now I'm still wrestling with this composition. Um, the sun hasn't come up yet. We're about 10 or 15 minutes away. But in the meantime, I've still got the problem of an extremely bright sky and an extremely dark fore and mid grounds. So what I'm doing with this, I'm using a technique which is going to focus stack a couple of foregrounds with right in front of the lens and then just are the rocks just on the edge of the, uh, the cliff that I'm stood back from. So those will be two focus points with a bright exposure and then focusing on the flank of Travan uh, with that dial right down to control the highlights in the sky. So the final image will be a blend of three. Now in order to make sure that I've got what I need for this image, I'm just taking lots of exposures. Um, I'm struggling with the wind and the camera is moving a lot and I've got a relatively slow shutter speed. So what I'm, and I don't really want to up my ISO to compensate for that if I can possibly help it. So every now and then the wind dies down and I grab a few exposures. So the thing to do is take enough back with you that you can work with in post. Um, and it doesn't matter what order you fire them off in, you can sort it all out later on. Well, now the sun is properly up and it's actually been above the horizon for about the last quarter of an hour. Unfortunately, I didn't get my favourite type of sunrise shot today. If you follow my channel at all, you'll know that every now and then I try and get one with just a sliver of sun poking up above a sharp horizon. Unfortunately today there's some low cloud, so the sun was already well clear of the horizon before it broke through the cloud, and of course at that point it's just completely impossible to photograph it. Anyway, what I've got now instead is some lovely golden side light and probably about half an hour or so to play with it before it gets up and gets a bit harsh. So I'm going to start pointing my camera away from the sun at some different compositions and make the most of this light. Well, 
Well, I've been hanging around for about an hour to get this final composition I've been after. I've taken the opportunity to get all packed up and ready to go, and now the light is where I wanted it to be. When the sun first came up, Penarolwen, across the valley from here, that nice pyramid-shaped mountain, was in deep shadow. But as the sun came up, I knew it was going to light the flank on the eastern side. And in the foreground, I've got these really sharp rocks that lead across to it quite nicely. So I was waiting for the light to be just right to pick off that composition. It's pretty straightforward, and I'm not focus stacking this one, even though Penarolwyn is a long way in the background. The reason for that is it doesn't matter if Penarolwyn is slightly soft, because it's more about describing the light and the atmosphere. Well, now I think I'm all done from up here on this glorious morning. Time to head down and head home because uh, the lovely Mrs G has probably forgotten who I am. Uh, thank you ever so much for coming along with me. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, maybe you know somebody else who might too. Hit the share button below. And if you haven't done it yet, why not subscribe now and join me next time. Cheers. Cheers.